normal example five. In this example, we look at an application using the normal distribution. Up to this point, you've looked at just computational problems using the normal distribution. Uh, but here, we're actually modeling the time that uh, a person might wait in line. And we're going to assume that it is approximately normally distributed. And that might be reasonable. Uh, and one way we could check that is if we had a bunch of waiting times, a list of waiting times, we could look at the histogram. And if that histogram looked bell-shaped, then maybe it's reasonable to model the waiting times using this normal distribution. Anyway, so we're going to assume that the waiting time is normally distributed, or approximately. And we're going to assume that the mean waiting time is 4 minutes, and the variance uh, waiting time is 1. That's actually 1 minute squared uh, here. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of state the obvious. I'm going to let x be the waiting time. Here. And so based on the assumptions that I've created, x is, let me back up, let me come down here, x is normally distributed. with a mean of 4 and a variance of 1. Okay, by the way, this means that sigma is 1. If the variance is 1, then the standard deviation is 1. Um, okay, so what I want to do is compute the probability that x is more than 5. What's the chance? That's what part A is asking here. What is the chance that a person will wait for more than 5 minutes if, if they're in line and waiting times follow this, this distribution here? So on the picture of the distribution, now I'm drawing the distribution of x. Here's the distribution of x. The mean is 4 Somewhere over here is 5, one standard deviation to the right of the mean. But the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 is that area. Okay, well, um, we can't just go straight to our, uh, our table and compute that area because uh, the, our table gives areas for the standard normal distribution. The standard normal, if you recall, has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. This clearly does not have a mean of 0. Um, but we can get to this probability by doing the appropriate z-score transformation on x. So if you recall the z-score transformation, oh, excuse me. Actually, let me, let me draw it right here. If I use this transformation, that z equals x minus mu over sigma, this picture now becomes, in terms of the z-axis, or the z-distribution, you are the z-distribution, the mean is 0, um, and this point 5 is actually at the point 1. And the reason why is because the, diff the distance between 4 and 5 is 1 standard deviation. And in general, this value is 1. Um, let me give you another reason why this is the case. Uh, if I was to use this transformation on each quantity in this inequality, in other words, I'm going to have x minus uh, the mean, which was 4, over the standard deviation, which was 1. When I do the left-hand side, I'm going to do the right-hand side. So I have 5 minus 4 over 1. By the way, subtracting off a value and dividing by a positive value, which is what I've done, 
does not alter the, the direction of this inequality. Okay, so what I have here now is I've taken X and I run it through this transformation. So this becomes a Z now and what I have here is um, 5 minus 4 over 1 which is 1. Now maybe you see why this picture looks like this one through the transformation because the probability X is greater than 5 is equal to the probability that Z is greater than 1. So the area under the curve to the right of 1. So now what I've done is basically I've made this probability problem, although it was in terms of a, uh, a normal X variable that wasn't standard, I made it into a standard normal probability problem. And so now finding this probability to begin with just boils down to finding this normal probability that, that we've got some experience with. So I want this area here. Well, the tables up to this point, hopefully you've had enough experience to see that the tables don't give you areas to the right of a point, rather table C will give you the area to the left of a point. Um, so what I'm, what I'm going to do is rewrite this probability statement. I'm going to come back over here. This probability statement is actually 1 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1. Okay, and by the way, with continuous random variables, if you have the uh, less than or equal to or just the strictly less than, it turns out that's, um, that's not important in terms of these probabilities because point probabilities for the continuous distribution are zero. Um, so here we have 1 minus P of Z is less than or equal to 1. Um, I can actually compute this probability, or in other words, I can find this area from table C and then I can get this area. So pulling out table C here, I look at the Z score of 1, so I look at 1.0, and I see the area to the left of 1.0 is 0.8413. So this area here is 0.8413. Four, one, three. Therefore, the area to the right of that point um, must be, uh, let's see, so 1 minus 0.8413. Uh, so we're going to have 7 here, uh, 8.15. So that's equal to 0.1587. That would be the final area, but the, the final answer here. But just following what we've done in this, this trail of probabilities, this is 1 minus, we found this to be 0 0.8413, 0 0.8413. Again, that is 0 0.1587. Okay, so the chance that someone will make wait more than five minutes is oh, almost 16%. So suppose you were, this was a waiting line at, at a restaurant, uh, a fast food place, and you ran an advertisement that said if someone waits, if someone has to wait more than five minutes to get their food, then... Um, then we'll give them free food. And so as a manager, you might, we'll give their order for free. So as a manager, you might want to know, well, how often am, am I going to have to give uh, food away? This would give you some sense. 16% of the time, you'd have to give food away. And that may be worth it to the manager to run that sort of ad, um, even though he's going to have to give this, this much food away, 16% of it. Or 16% of the time, he'll have to give uh, the, the, the free food away. Okay. This next example is just uh, piggybacking on the setup that we had in Part A. We want to now find the waiting time that is greater than 90% of all other waiting times. And so what we're looking at here, we're looking at a particular x value. So drawing the distribution of x. 
Here again, x the mean is 4. We have a particular x value here. I'm going to call it x naught. And we know that this x naught is greater than 0.9. Or the area, I'm sorry, let me move back up. The area under the curve to the left of this x naught is 0.9. So we have this sort of setup here. It makes sense to put the x naught in the right tail of the distribution. Um, because the area to the left of this x naught is 0.9 here. So the area to the right is clearly 0.1. So we got to find this waiting time here. Well, it turns out that we're going to have to use the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, to get at that x naught. What I'm going to do again is transform. As I transform from x to z, the mean goes from 4 to 0. And now I've got this x naught uh, that is related to a z naught here. And the area under the curve to the right of z naught is 0.1, to the left of z naught is 0.9. OK, well, what's the relationship between x naught and z naught? Well, we know that uh, z naught equals x naught minus mu over sigma. And that's just the general transformation between x and z. Okay, so this implies that using a little algebra here, and it implies that x naught is equal to z naught z naught times sigma plus mu. Now, these we know this value we have to find from the table. And once we get these three, we get x naught. That's what we want with to begin with. Okay. So z naught here. Well, what is z naught? Looking at this picture, the value of z such that the area under the curve to the left of this value is 0.9. So I look at my table C here look at the z-score that has an area that's closest to 0.9. So the closest I can get is, let's see, I got 0.9015 or 0.8997. This is actually a little bit closer, so we're going to go with this. Uh, so it would be 1.28. Okay. So this z naught here is one point. Not coming up very good. One point two eight. All right. So now my x naught then is one point two eight times one. That's what what sigma was or is plus four. So five point two eight here that it is in minutes, that is the waiting time that is larger than 90% of all other waiting times.